But is it religion's role to get involved in politics? We're joined by Church of England Minister Reverend David Peterson, who says the church is meant to spread the gospel and not intervene in policy, and broadcaster and commentator on religion and ethics, Ray Duke, who thinks the Archbishop is brave and bold to speak out. Uh, let's come to you first, uh, Reverend. Uh, Archbishop of Canterbury, effectively, he's your boss. Yes, <laughs> yes. But you don't uh, agree with what he did. Yeah, no, I think that he's doing a great job. You know, I just think that we need to focus more on preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. As the church, we need to be more focused on souls going to hell rather than immigrants being sent to Rwanda. You know, we need to focus on spreading the gospel of Jesus so that we can populate the kingdom of God rather than the United Kingdom. But That's if uh, he's a religious man like you, he believes in, yeah, souls going to heaven. He also believes it's apparently, you know, from what he said, it's morally unacceptable to uh, act towards immigrants in this way. Why do you think he's wrong for speaking out about it? Yeah, I just think that currently, I think the Church of England is trying to be so relevant that we're almost becoming irrelevant in the sense that if we focused on our great commission given to us by our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. which is to go forth make disciples, baptising people in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, if that was more of our focus than getting involved in all of these uh, political issues. I mean, Jesus said to give unto Caesar what is Caesar's and to give unto God what is God's. You know, we're supposed to serve God and the politicians is supposed to serve okay. the people. Okay, Ray Duke. No, I think it's absolutely the right thing that Justin Welby did yesterday in speaking out about this. You know, your, your faith informs the way in which you see the world, your, your political views. And so for him to sort of stop that in its tracks would be, would be odd. And in terms of, you know, sort of his preaching of the gospel, he's there in the House of Lords quoting from Matthew 25 when Jesus says, you know, that we should be um, welcoming the stranger. Mm. And, and it's, it's that using the, the scripture that's then wanting to sort of He's wanting to change society, and that surely that's it, it's mm. a good Did, thing. Wasn't yeah. wasn't Jesus Christ's uh, mission to stand up to politicians and to defeat wrongdoing? Exactly, and this is what the people thought at the time. Hence, why the disciples were upset when he died on the cross, because ultimately, Jesus Christ came to deliver us from hell from sin mm -hmm. so that we can have the gift of everlasting life. That was his ultimate goal, to die on the cross for our sins so that we can be forgiven of our unrighteousness and inherit the kingdom of heaven. This is the whole point of the gospel mm -hmm. and churchmanship. Yeah, but, but in, in that sense, if you spot a sin, is it not your moral duty to try and counteract it? I mean, presumably that's what the Archbishop of Canterbury thinks his role is. Yeah, but I think that we're living in a day and age where the Church of England needs to be more biblical and less political. Mm. Where we're having issues within our own denomination now in regards to politics and political views and where society is leading us, rather than leading society to Jesus and standing on the Bible. But when you say that's exactly what he's Bible. doing, that he's, what, he's saying Jesus do. called people to welcome the stranger. We are not doing that in society. He's holding politicians to account to, to try to replicate more of what he saw Jesus do in our society today. So to, to see an injustice and to not use your platform and voice just to root it out, for me, that, that, that would, there would be something morally wrong in, in doing that. I understand what you're saying, but I think the biggest injustice that we face today is the injustice of sin, which is, can only be dealt with with people repenting and coming to faith in Jesus and coming to a point where they accept Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. But perhaps I by, think, by getting out and by, yeah. by sp speaking, you know, look at us all, all today, this, you know, it's, it's head, head, um, front page news, rather than just being you know, speaking to his congregation on a Sunday mm. to a relatively small um, number, he's, he is, he's preaching, mm. he's getting a broader cast out. So. But with He's what message? What with what message? He's speaking about with immigration. The to love your neighbour. You love your neighbour, but also we need to get that message out, which is the fundamental truth of our faith, which is to give your life to Jesus Christ, because there is nobody that is mm. going to love you. More yeah, but than the, but Jesus. you know, you, you, the, the, Jesus Christ is at the centre of the religion, but he 
you know, he talks about Jesus Christ's life. And he said famously in 2019 that Jesus Christ was, of course, white, middle class and British. He wouldn't have got a visa to come here unless there was a shortage of carpenters. <laughs> you know, but, you know, but, but it was a great line. But that's, but surely that is your kind of job as, your, as you lead the faith is to make people connect with Jesus in things that are going on in everyday life in our world today. And, yeah, and, and right. you, can, you can make that real example now that Jesus Christ wouldn't stand a chance coming to this country right now if he was a refugee in these times, when he has been a refugee in the past. Yeah, and I think that when, when you speak about that, I think that what we have to remember as people of the cloth and as clergy, mm -hmm. our fundamental goal is to populate the kingdom of God. And I think that sometimes politics can just be a distraction. But, but, th but then if you bear in mind that Christianity is on the fall here, if you look at a recent survey that said less and less people are now are affiliating with Christianity or a religion. So there's a... Th and th I think it's really why, important to promote both, the faith in these I think ways. Isn't he doing the right thing? No, I think that because we're focusing too much on other issues and trying to get involved and to do people's jobs for them mm -hmm. rather than us just focusing on, OK, what do we have to do? We need to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, religion remains incredibly sort of into the gospel. Yeah, but, from, from the rest of society. Right, I think it's really interesting. I think people listening to um, the, the Reverend will also start to think, OK, if that's the job of religious leaders, what on earth are they doing? in the House of Lords. Mm. Exactly. We should be in there praying for the politicians, praying for the MPs. Not democratically but they, they're, elected. They're able to hold politicians to account and provide a moral but steer why? and moral why guidance. Should, why should religion? Because religion, what, what's be in the there? point of religion if it just stands, stands separate and stands on its own? It needs to infiltrate society. The two should be intricately interwoven because you can't... If you have a faith, that's going to affect the way in which you see the world, the way in which you value human life and, therefore, political policy that you'd want to implement. And, and you know, we, you need political policy to implement lots well, of things... Well, the Bible says that we are, we are in the world, equality. but we are not of the world. So, can, so mm. I, I, are you saying, therefore, that your boss, and I think there's 26 bishops in the House of Lords at the moment, they should be removed from the House of Lords? I just think that if they're there, that they should really be there to pray for the MPs and to encourage the MPs to come to but that's faith. But that's not what they're there for at the moment. Faith. They're there to actually have a say on politics, have a say on laws. Yeah. They have a vote. I mean, you know, what's, should we remove all of that I believe, I believe as church leaders, you know, our role is not to change policy, but our role is to change people, mm. to, to introduce them to this message that changed my life as a young man. You know, I could have been out there going to the clubs, hey, getting drunk, having a great time. <laughs> but the message of Jesus Christ changed my life where mm. I'm so happy, filled with joy, because I have this hope of a better future. But arguably, is that not what Justin ever, Welby did everlasting life. That he is trying to reach, to reach more people by using his platform and using his voice in that way. And I think it's particularly powerful just four days on from when we've had the eyes of you know, over 20 million people watching him as he crowned a king to take the focus away from royalty to those who are in need of our help and, and our compassion and um, has, you know, shined the spotlight on that. I think that's an incredible use of his, you know, what we might have thought as, in a worldly sense, would be the, the mm. pinnacle of his career. Mm. The coronation. But you see a He's very distinct power. line between religion and politics. You'd rather 100%. he was in there trying to convert 100%. everybody. Exactly. All right. And, okay. And, and getting them to come to the place where they're praying about their decisions mm. and involving God in politics through prayer. Don't okay. get me wrong, I love the Archbishop and all that he does, but I just believe that that should be the drive. Great okay. to talk to you both. Thank you both Thank you. very much indeed.